The general ledger accountant rather than the payroll team is typically responsible for recording the payroll journal entries. It's very important that there are proper separation of duties processes in place for the general ledger accountant to understand the payroll that was processed, but not have access to confidential payroll information. In addition, the general ledger account is often responsible for providing payroll general ledger rec reconciliations to the external auditors and answering any questions the auditors have about the payroll, bonuses, severance, and the related payments. In this video, we'll discuss how accounts record payroll journal entries and post those entries to the general ledger. Recording payroll journal entries involves two separate entries. One to record the payroll expense from the payroll register and another entry to record the cash payment to the employees. The general journal entry to record the payroll expense is based on the payroll register and it involves the following three steps. Gross pay is debited to wages and salaries, and typically there are separate general ledger accounts for different types of wages. In our textbook, the gross pay is debited to shipping wages expense for, for the shipping clerks and supervisor and to office salaries expense for the office clerk. Each type of deduction is credited to a separate liability account such as Social Security tax payable, Medicare tax payable, employee income tax payable, and health insurance premiums payable. There could be additional liability accounts that are credited, such as 401k and dental and vision premiums payable, as well as union dues and donations payable. Basically, we're recording everything withheld from the employee's paycheck as a liability because it will be paid later to government agencies and other payers. The third step is that the net pay is credited to the liability account, salaries and wages payable. It will then be paid to the employees. Let's look at our textbook example. As I mentioned, typically the general ledger account would not see the details of the employee information. Instead, they would, um, they would receive a summary report that only shows the categories and the total amounts. That said, uh, in many small businesses, the account bookkeeper also handles the payroll. I've worked with several small and medium businesses where the same person handled both functions. However, it's ideal when those two functions are separate. Here we have the payroll register for the week of January 2021. It starts with the name of the employee and their marital status. And uh, typically you would also see the number of dependents listed here and any additional tax withholding the employee is requesting. Next are the number of hours and the hourly rate and the calculation of the regular and overtime wages. The payroll register then continues with the taxable wages for Social Security and Medicare taxes, and typically there would also be a column for federal and state taxable wages. In our example here, all the taxable wages are the same. However, when, when, when the employees have three tax deductions, the amount subject to federal Social Security tax and Medicare tax would be different from the, from the gross wages. The next set of columns are the deductions for Social Security, Medicare, and income taxes, as well as health insurance. Finally, we get to the net pay, uh, the check number, and the distribution of the wages by type, in this case, office salaries and shipping wages. So let's record the, um, the first part of our payroll journal entry, the, the gross wages. The, the gross wages for this week's payroll are $2,247.50, and we need to record this amount as an expense. However, um, we need to also split it between office salaries of $480 and shipping wages of $1,767.50.
uh, and 50 cents. We enter the date in the date column and the account name in the description column. We, we first enter office salaries expense in the description column and the amount of $480 into the debit column. On the next line, we enter shipping wages expense in the description column and $1,767.50 into the debit column. After we finish the journal entry and post the journal entry to the general ledger, we will write the account number in the posting reference column. For now, though, let's move on to the next step of recording our payroll journal entry. The next step is to record all of the deductions from the paycheck as liabilities. In our case, it is Social Security $439.35, Medicare tax for $32.59, income tax of $155, and health insurance of $80. These amounts add up to $406.94, which is also the difference between the gross and the net pay. That tells us that we've captured all of the deductions. And now we're ready to enter the deductions from the payroll register as liabilities, meaning credits on the payroll journal entry. We do that by indenting the third line and writing Social Security tax payable in the description column in the amount of 139.35 in the credit column. On the, on the fourth line, we write Medicare tax payable in the description column in the amount of 32.59 into the credit column. On the fifth line, we write employee income tax payable into the, the description column in the amount of 155 into the credit column. On the sixth line, we write health insurance premiums payable in the description column and $80 into the credit column. We can, and now we can move on to the last step of our payroll journal entry. The net amount of the payroll register is $1,840.56. And we need that amount to complete our payroll journal entry. We enter the account salaries and wages payable into the description column and the amount of $1,840.56 as a credit. Uh, don't forget to also write a short description about the journal entry indented into the description column. Also, double check that your journal entry balances. It's very common to have small rounding variances on the payroll register. The general ledger account records an additional journal entry for the payment of the wages and subsequently, which we're not going to cover right now, uh, for the payment of the taxes and other liabilities. To record the payment of the wages to the employees, we debit the liability account to which we previously recorded the net pay, sal salaries and wages payable and write $1,840.56 into the debit column. We, ended, uh, we indent slightly on the next line and write cash into the description column and $1,840.56 into the credit column. The next step is to post the journal entries to the general ledger. Uh, just please keep in mind that this process is automated in most companies because they use accounting software. To manually post these two payroll uh, entries, we first debit the gross wages to the office salaries expense account for $480 and to the office salaries expense uh, shipping wages expense account for $1,767.50. We then credit all of the liability accounts, the Social Security tax payable account for $139.35, the Medicare tax payable account for $32.59, the income tax payable account for $155, and the health insurance premium payable account for $80. We then credit the salaries and wages payable account for $1,840.56. That completes the posting of the first journal entry. We're now ready to post the second journal entry by debiting the salaries and wages payable account for $1,840.56 and crediting the cash account. There you have it. In this video, you learned how to record and post payroll journal entries.